Hi, I'm Jenny from 20 by Jenny, and we're here today to talk to Sharon Creech, whose new book is The Unfinished Angel. You may know Sharon from Walk Two Moons, which won the Newbery Medal, The Wanderer, which got a Newbery Honor book, and one of my favorites, which is Love That Dog. We have a treat in store today because Sharon is here with her editor, Joanna Kotler, and we're just going to kind of listen in. Excellent. Hi, I'm Joanna Kotler, Sharon Creech's editor, and this is Sharon Creech. Hi. And we're here in New York. Sharon's about to go on tour, so we thought we'd talk to you guys a little bit, and we're going to talk to each other. We have Love That Dog, and Hate That Cat, the companion book, and Sharon's new book, The Unfinished Angel. Ah. Which is fabulous. It's a cute one. Isn't that cute? It's so beautiful, too. I it's all spanky it. and new. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> we thought we'd talk a little bit about our relationship, right? Because right, I how we work. How we work together. Are, the students are always really interested in that. Uh-huh. And, you know, they think... They have this image that editor is a really mean person. Yes, well, and we are. Saying, well, no, <laughs> yes. no, no, they're we there should. to help you. I think what the, what happened when we first started, we didn't know each other. In fact, I came in when Sharon had just won the Newbery, so I was just a right. little bit intimidated. <laughs> and so I called Sharon always, like I do with any author, and said, "How do you like to work?" Right. And you said, "Please don't change any of my words." <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't the first thing out of my And I was really, really scared. <laughs> but, but it takes a little bit to get to know someone. Yeah. And it's all about, don't you think? Yeah, it's about know. trust. It's like, about in the trust. beginning, you, you're real wary. Like, does she get me? You know, I think, you know, does she get the story? Uh, it, are the suggestions she's making, do I really trust those? And more increasingly, like, now I really trust. Anything yeah. you say, I'm like, oh, I better take that seriously. I better... Must be a reason why she's saying this, but in the beginning, I have to admit, I, I don't you trust didn't. anybody. And also, and also, you don't know who I am, right? right? So why right. would you trust me? I wouldn't trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's she? Anyway. But that, that was really great the way that grew, and now it's been many, many years that we've worked together right. on many, many books. Right. So, and so we have these great conversations that a lot of times we do. Well, mostly we do it over the phone. Yeah. Like I'll send in uh, a manuscript. You want to talk about this now? Like yeah. how we sort of how. Mm-hmm. We, like I wait until I've got the manuscript as polished as it can possibly be. I'm real jealously what guarding, you guarding, yeah, yeah. guarding my stuff, my words. <laughs> and then when I'm when I can't do anything more with it, and I need Joanna's wise opinion, then I send it to her. She reads it very carefully, and then she calls. And one of the best calls I ever got was when she got love that dog. I sent it off like. Well, I was real scared to send this off because I didn't know what it was, and I kept saying, you know, I'm not ready to send you anything. And she kept saying, you're working on something, and you're not telling me. What is it? And so I said, well, you know, I've got this thing, but i got a problem in it. i got a real person in the book, Walter D. Myers. What? I, she said, send it. So she said, send it. And there's no Wait, wait, well, yeah, the note in it said. Oh, the note the said The note what? said, oh, I don't know what this is. Maybe you can tell me. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what it said. I didn't know. Yeah. Is, is it a, a book? book? <laughs> Is it a book? Is it just some hybrid whatever? And so Joanna called almost instantly after she read it and said, love that book. Um, And I was like, so, first of all, it's a book. And secondly, that's probably what everybody wants their editor to say, love that book. Of course. And now I have a a poem on my desk. I meant to bring it today. I forgot it. It sits there all the time now, which was the little poem you wrote me. The oh, love that Joanna poem right, you wrote me right. after we finished this book. <laughs> right. Love that Joanna like a monkey loves bananas. I right. This. <laughs> like that. Yeah. But this was an interesting experience because right. it was it was a complete departure for you. Right. How you wrote this book. Right. How you told the story. Right. And that was an interesting experience. It was quite different than a big novel with a lot of twists right. and turns. Right. Right. So it was it was crucial first of all to get Joanna's initial reaction and then we had a really interesting we didn't do a whole lot of revision as I recall but we read everything out loud every line like I do a page she do a page to see if the line breaks were right Mm -hmm. and if it wasn't then we would change it Mm -hmm. but that was Mm -hmm. we both remember that so vividly reading that on the phone. And then we sat in a hotel room once. Do you remember it? Yeah. Some hotel. We, were, yeah, we happened to be in for something around. We sat side by side on that couch. That's right. And we read yeah. every single line. And it yes. really, because it so matters where everything falls in the book. And right. just how they face each other and what, what's going on. And right. Yeah, there wasn't a huge amount of revision, though. It was like I felt so lucky to have this book right. in my hands. It was such but a beautiful the, Yeah. Thing. And that's, that really, that stands out in both of our minds. But we had, with Hate That Cat, one thing I remember that, that does also happen with every book is that 
we get into these kind of philosophical right. discussions that are triggered by, you wouldn't think it's a philosophical trigger. For instance, well, maybe you would, but I, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, um, with this book, it was, the book is about Jack and um, poetry, but it's also about his mother and cats, of course. But um, you said at one point, oh, the first draft that I sent in, so we've got Jack and this really mean, nasty cat, and one of the most valuable things she said in the beginning was that cat is like one of the best characters. Let's yeah. beef it up. And so that allowed me to, that really was very smart because the, the cat was very The cat becomes really a serious right. character in the book, which I love because yeah. really, yeah. <laughs> It's a cat. It's a mean cat. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. And yeah. yet it has, yeah. you can see, what do you call those um, authentic moments? Yeah. She, yeah. she points out places in the manuscript that she calls authentic moments that are, are ones that, that, touch, that touch you, right? Well, they How seem really apparent to me when I'm reading something. And you know, every author has just a special relationship with each person and you you're such a subtle writer I think mm. so subtle that these moments kind of shine out they just kind of lift off the page ever so gently yeah you know? see and I don't see that yeah. after that's having, how I see it you right know? after having read it through maybe 50 times yeah. nothing shines anymore yeah. you know and I need somebody <laughs> to tell me and so well in this case it might have been screeching rather than shining because it's Good. a cat <laughs> Yes, but there's a screechy, ah, shiny thing. Yes, it was the part about the mother, Jack yes. and the mother. Remember how subtle that was? Yeah, yeah. And you said, let's let. There's something more there. Mm -hmm. you, know, you felt that there was something more there. Could I explore it? That more? was the philosophical. Right yeah, there. And started talking yes. about this book, book versus this book. The idea of finding your voice, right? And then understanding as as a yes. child, but also as a writer. Why do you write? Right. That's what we talked about. Why do you write? What impels you to listen and to hear and then and, and and for me it was the mother, you know. Right. And for you, I mean, it seemed apparent that that's what you were doing. Right. And I wasn't trying. conscious of that until she asked that question. And I remember, I was sitting in Switzerland with when we were talking about this yeah. book, and you asked that question, and I just like felt I feel this like my heart stops a minute because it was a question so close to what I was exploring but didn't know I was exploring when she says why she was asking it about Jack yes but she said it to me why do you write that's right that's right and then I realized that like Jack I really really on a deep and profound level have to say have to talk to somebody yeah. say these things that I am that I want to explore right right, right. I mean it's just <laughs> And then once I realized that that was what Jack was doing, and that I could feel it, I think that was that allowed me to, to go back in and right. to kind of create, connect those two threads, threads. That cat trying to say in its own way, and then right. that boy finding a voice for his mother, and that I, I love right. that. And then Joanna helped me turn the end. The la you want to read the last bit? I no, I like, think you should. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> you <laughs> try? No, um, you have to do it. Um, You're the author. No, I don't know. You've got to read it because I, I always just cry. <laughs> That's uh, no good no, for the videotape. No, no, no. Wait. Um, he, he writes to his mother. Um, <laughs> and I wrote maybe three stanzas of this, and Joanna said, well, do you mean what he's saying is, and she just, it almost, I think I incorporated some of your verbatim no. words here. No, no, but no, anyway, no, no, when you read it, this is just to say, it sort of takes off of the William Carlos Williams poems. He's writing it to his mother. Right. What's the name of the William Carlos Williams poem? Um, this is just to say. This is just to say, so it's the same type. Right. This is just to say, and this is Jack talking, right. right? I will listen for you, I will hear all the sounds in the world, all the delicious, ineffable, effable sounds, all the thrumming and humming and tintinabulating sounds. I will hear all the sounds in the world, and I will write them down so you can hear them too. I yeah. love that. That's I love beautiful. it too. But also, it always hits me when you read it that, um, you know, I wrote a lot because my father, for the last six years of his life, couldn't speak, mm -hmm. and I felt like a, right. It was really as soon as he died that I started writing right. that I was using the words that he couldn't use. That's what happened.